Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Patty. I go by Patty Mac Makes everywhere online. In today's video, I want to do a couple of things. I want to give you like a two year update on how I feel about my Calyx, which you can see right behind me. And the second thing that I want to talk about or share with you is how I'm using it to keep my little sewing notions and odds and ends organized. Now I will tell you this, I am a horrible organizer. <laughs> I'm really bad at it. Uh, I do the best I can, but in sewing, there are so many, just so many little bits and pieces and bits and bobs and this and that and so much, just little things that you have to figure out how to keep it straight. And I'm not good at that. <laughs> so uh, this really helps me. So if we go back in time, a couple of years ago, I did a video for you and I did a blog post on my uh, Calax unit. If you don't know, Calax is a, uh, it's an, an Ikea product. And it's like, you know, their, their answer to the cube storage. And what's so nice about it is that you can get it in many, many different configurations, as big or as small as you like. And then within the size, like this one is um, one high and four deep. And so within each of those cubes, you then have other possibilities for what you can do. Uh, you can do like I did, which is the drawers. They also have it where you can do little doors, which I did on my second unit that is in my uh, bedroom as a storage unit. Um, you could do baskets if you like. You can just have them be open. There's all kinds of different configurations that you can take advantage of and design this little piece of furniture the way that works best for you. So with Ikea, let's just get it out of the way. You either love it or you hate it. There's no in between. <laughs> You love the stuff, you hate the stuff. Uh, and they're never gonna meet in the middle. I fall in the camp of I love this stuff. I love it because it's easy to take care of, it's lightweight, so it's something that I can move around by myself. Uh, it looks clean and neat, it's small, but it does the most amazing job of organizing a ton of stuff. So the thing with the Calax is that it gives you so many possibilities to customize it the way that you want it. And uh, you can take it a step further, which is what I did, and I put little furniture feet on it, which you can sort of see. You see how it's off the ground? So it's got little itty bitty furniture feet on it. And if you're interested in seeing how I did that, I'll link to the video where I show you how to do it. It's super easy. You do not need a drill. You could do it with a screwdriver. I recommend getting the, the hardware and the feet and everything at Home Depot. That's where I got mine. You can go in there and you can see it with your own eyes and, and see what you're purchasing. Uh, but everybody likes Amazon links. They all want Amazon links. And so I have Amazon links, but it's not the same as the feet that are on this one. So people have complained about that. I, I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, everybody wants the Amazon link. Amazon does not have everything that Home Depot has. That's just the way it is. Uh, but not everybody has access to Home Depot. So I'm just doing my best over here. I'm telling you what I got at Home Depot, but I'm gonna give you Amazon links. I will also link you over to my blog post uh, so I'll link you in the description to both the video and the blog post that I did about how I uh, customize this. So when I review something for you on the channel, I, I like to use it for a while. I mean, I'm not talking about, I get it out of the box and I use it for an hour. That's what I see a lot of people do is their reviews. You, you can't know if something is really functional and going to work for you in an hour. Everything works in the first hour. <laughs> okay, that doesn't mean anything. I've had two years to use this item. And I'm gonna tell you something, I love it. I love it more than the day I put it together because it's held up really well and it does what I need it to do. As I'm filming this for you, I'm sitting on the floor of my uh, sewing room, which in my home is my living room. I took over the living room as my sewing space for a couple of reasons. One, it's the best light in the house, so it makes it 
uh, like a hundred times easier for me to make videos for you. It also has more space, which again makes it a hundred times easier for me to make videos for you. So because it's in my living room, it has to play a little double duty. And you can see right now I've got um, some plants on top. When the weather warms up enough, all my plants go outside. I put all my house plants out in the summer. They all live on the outside, on my covered porch mostly. Uh, but all of these will go outside. Uh, back here you can see is my uh, ice machine because I don't have an ice maker in my fridge, so it's there. <laughs> I'm just doing my best over here. So you can see, I mean, it's pretty functional. So I can put all my house plants up there and then all behind these drawers and there's eight drawers. They're kind of small, but it's eight drawers and it organizes so much stuff. So, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I am going to um, get in closer and what I'm gonna do is just open the drawers, let you see what's in there. We'll talk briefly about what's in there and you can just kind of see how much stuff this holds. Let me get off camera here and then I'm just gonna run you through and let you see the drawers. But I mean, I'm just gonna tell you, I love the thing. It's two years. Uh, I still like the feet that I put on it. I love the way it looks. I still think it looks good. I use it constantly. I mean, I don't, I'm not trying to baby the furniture, but it still looks pretty good. And I have dropped things. I've had, you know, plants. If you keep house plants, you know, you're going to have spillage with the water. It's just going to happen. And I have glass on top to try to protect a little bit, which really helps. Uh, but water has gotten underneath the glass. Uh, so I've had water collect between the glass and the furniture top and I still was able to just wipe it clean. So there's like a, it's like a plastic coating, I guess, over the, the paper. <laughs> I mean, you know, this is not, let's just, let's just call it for what it is. This is not heirloom furniture. You're not going to get this and then pass it down to your grandkids. Well, in this economy, you might, unless we have a turnaround, this might be your version of heirloom furniture, <laughs> but we're going to hope things improve. So depending on how the economy goes, this may or may not be heirloom furniture for you. But for me, uh, you know, it works. It does what I need it to do. I still love it. It's been easy to keep up. It still looks good after two years of use. And I expect it to last me the rest of my life. You know, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't at this point. So barring any crazy, yeah, you know, um, wild act of nature uh, should be fine. Okay, uh, let's take a look at what's actually in the drawers. Okay, here we are and we're just kind of uh, over the top of the uh, furniture. You can see it's here. Come around. Here's the drawers. When I did this project, I also put my own custom hardware on, which was a little expensive, but it looks so pretty. Okay, so this first drawer. This is basically my junk drawer. So I've got lights and uh, some yarn and things like that in a little bowl. This is also Ikea. It's really cute. I'll get all this back out when the plants go outside. That's like just kind of my junk drawer. Uh, this is, in this drawer, I've got uh, jelly rolls, uh, just some random pieces. These were all sent to me by uh, viewers as gifts and I really appreciate it because I can use these fabrics to work out different designs that I might be working on and some of them may not be like my ultimate taste in fabric but having the extras to just kind of work out a design idea it, it's so helpful because you know I pay for all of this out of my pocket when I do projects and things. And when you guys are kind enough to share your extras, it, it helps more than you can imagine. And I've used quite a lot of these over the last couple of years to work out different projects. But you could see if you had jelly rolls, it, you could store quite a few in here. And especially if you put them up like this and you could very easily see everything you have. So you could really load this up if you had them. Okay, the next drawer up. Uh, this drawer is just packed solid and this is all different sewing things. So I've got like a, the packaging for uh, this foot and it says Janome. 
Uh, so what I've learned is that my Kenmore sewing machine that I use, that was my mother's machine, uh, it takes Janome feet. So any Janome feet, because it's technically a Janome sewing machine. It just has that Kenmore label on it. But when I took it in to have it repaired and serviced, last year that's what I learned. It's really a Janome machine. So anyway, that's in there. Uh, and then I have bobbins and... These are my pins that I use for quilt basting. Uh, these are other safety pins. I mean, basically this is just like my odds and ends drawer. All kinds of things in here. These are uh, machine feet and all of that for the Kenmore. This is really old. So this is like, um, this, this was something I pulled out of my mother's this is pulled out of my mother's sewing kit, and I, you know you can just see how old this is. So this was to make, I guess, like uh, little baby's pants. <laughs> she probably made stuff for me. Uh, was uh, 60 cents. So yeah, this probably goes back. Well, it would have to go back to the the 60s or 70s. So that's old. Um, more bobbins. This is a, I'm not sure what that is. I really don't know. Uh, okay, so in here you can see I've got like rotary cutter supplies. I've got my machine needles are in here. Back in this corner, it's all like boxes for my presser feet or other presser feet. Basically, this is like my little notions drawer. And, you know, honest to goodness, it just holds a ton of stuff. And inside what I wound up doing was getting these little organizers and these are also Ikea products. So this is a little square one and this is an oblong one. And this is actually for your silverware. Uh, but you know it works really well to organize all of these just crazy amount of odds and ends that we have. Down here, this is my thread drawer. All right, I had to adjust the camera a little bit. So this is my thread drawer. And uh, these are old kits that I picked up from Craftsy. So I still have some Craftsy thread that I'm working through. Um, more bobbins. And this is all my other thread. And mostly it's Aurifil. And I like that ermine color because it's just so neutral. And it, to me, it works with everything. Uh, and then whites and just some different things. But mostly I've been stocking this sort of a warm neutral. And that's a Gutterman. And it just works with everything. So, and then you can see I've got one of those cutlery organizers here. And it's just full of my thread. It's such a good way to organize your things. This is, this is some fancy filmmaking, you guys. I hope you appreciate the uh, fanciness of this filmmaking. Okay, uh, this is a bunch of odds and ends. So uh, this is a tailor's ham. And uh, I use this for uh, bag making, but you can also use it for uh, shoulders and that type of thing and garment sewing. Bunch of little ribbon roses. And uh, this is like bits and bobs. So it's got some embroidery stuff in here. Oh, these were little uh, decorative deer. I actually used them as a cake decoration. Aren't they cute? They were so cute on that deck on that cake. I'll get, I'll send you a link to the cake recipe. So uh, these are Duret's pens, and I call them the disappearing ink pen. And I use this in my embroidery. So I always draw on my whatever design and with these, and then I don't have to like rinse my project at the end. That kind of makes me nervous. So I like these. And I have a few on hand. So that drawer is not that exciting. But you know, it's like, it's got some embroidery floss, you know. And again, okay, let's take a look at the lower drawer. And this is a whole bunch of sewing notions. So over here, I've got uh, like a zipper collection. So I will buy my zippers, typically in Joanne, 
and I get them when they're on sale. And I just get them at all different colors and lengths and things like that. And I just toss them into this little organizer. And then when I'm ready to uh, sew something, I just come over and find you know something that will work. And then I've got my little tomato with my uh, sewing pins. Um, this is just like random, mostly hardware, like bag hardware type of things. And then uh, this is what I like to use when I make drawstring bags. And it's called a twist cord. I also get this in Joanne on sale. And I've got a bit of a collection. But given the way uh, Joanne is heading, I probably want to go ahead and get some more of that and stock it away because I do like this the best for making drawstring bags. So, I mean, you can see how many just little things. It's like, where would you stick all of this stuff if you didn't have all of these little drawers? You know, and some people might complain, oh, the drawers are so small. For me, it's perfect because I'm just trying to organize a piece of a sewing collection at a time. Okay, let's come and look at the last drawer. Okay, here's the last on the very end. And this is like ribbons and trims. So I've got all kinds of things in here. Some vintage stuff. This is obviously vintage. 30 feet of lace ribbon for two bucks. <laughs> so that tells you how old that is. Oh, oh, we're looking for this actually. Uh, so these are some old uh, knitting supplies. So this is like a row counter. Oh, these are um, added pieces to go with my Skatis organizer. And uh, anyway, but mostly ribbon trims, a few knitting things. I've got a bunch of buttons back here. It just the odds and ends that you wind up collecting when you do crafts. Uh, these are pens to block your projects and knitting. And then these are, okay, so these are um, beads, tea pins, uh, flowers, just all kinds of stuff. Oh, I forgot about these. Oh, oh I forgot all about these little guys. These are my little tiki's. Oh yeah, this is full of stuff. Okay, I got all kinds of things going. I just, whoops. That, that could have been bad. Anyway, and this was just like a container that had lunch meat. So I used that to organize that stuff. And okay, so that's what's in that drawer. All kinds of ribbons. A lot of these ribbons are vintage ribbons that came out of my mom's old sewing kit. And uh, I still use them. The grow green, these are like excellent for uh, like little bag pulls and that type of thing. So having a selection of color of grow green ribbon is really good. And uh, lastly, this is sort of a little bit of a junk drawer. Uh, this is carpet samples. I just have my carpet done, so that's can probably get rid of. Uh, just a random canvas ribbon that I didn't want to throw away. <laughs> Uh, this is, oh, needles and buttons and just odds and ends. And this actually goes on the skatis. Uh, this is where I have all my little pom-pom makers. And you can see I'm storing those in another one of those silverware organizers. This is the cutest thing. I bought this thing, I bet you, six or eight years ago. And it's a pom-pom maker. How cute that is. I've never used it. I have no idea how to use it, but it makes pom-poms. I'll have to go back and look up and see if these people are still around and try to find the instructions on how to use it. I'm having the worst time with my camera focusing today. I, I need new equipment so much. You also have to take my word for it. It's Palm Maker. Um, these are some little faux fur pom-poms. I don't know what I'm doing with those. Jingle bells. Uh, I can, I can oh, I know, I know. These are bunny rabbit tails for little, little bunny projects. And little cotton tails. And 
Maybe that was for a, a bigger bunny. That's what I'm gonna guess. Anyway. Oh, that's, uh, that's what's in here. So you can see it's just loads and loads of odds and ends and this and that and the other. And you know, where, where else are you gonna put all this stuff if you don't have these little bitty drawers to put things in? It's super helpful. I mean, there's a lot of ribbon in there. And if you were better organized than I am, you could really load it with all of your ribbons. Okay, that is all the information that I have for you on the Calyx. Uh, two years later, I still love it. I still recommend it. If you want ideas for how to customize your version, take a look at the video and the blog post that I'm sharing below. And I hope this gives you some ideas for how this um, little piece of furniture can help you organize a whole ton of stuff. We're moving into spring. This is the time of year that the light comes back and we can finally see what a pig pen we're living in. I know that's my experience. I'm like, how am I living with all of this? It's scary actually. So anyway, there's going to have to be a little bit of a channel break while I do the spring cleaning in here because it's gonna be intense. But that's a digression that we don't need to have today. For today, let me just tell you, I love the Calyx. I do recommend it uh, two years later and I use the thing every day. I think it's held up well. It does what I need it to do. And I don't know how I would store all of these little odds and ends if I didn't have it. I hope that helps you. And if you've been on the fence about it, uh, maybe this will give you the push that you needed to go ahead and make the investment and uh, include a Calyx in your sewing or quilting or crafting room. Okay, that's it for today. I appreciate you as always, as always, for watching and being supportive and all of those things. And uh, until next time, which hopefully is very soon, I will see you around YouTube. And until then, happy sewing, my friends.